you don't get to pick just because someone's a good person. That doesn't mean some bad things can't happen to them. But it was just like, mum of all people, like, did not deserve this at all. She's always done the right thing. She's always tried to look after people and then just to have that happen just seemed like a bit of a slap in the face. So there's Rick and I who, um, we got married in Australia many years ago. And so we've got Abby as the oldest one, then Jesse, my son, and well, our son, and Tilly, the youngest one. Tight knit. So yeah, very family, family orientated. Nana had like seven kids and majority of them all ended up here, so everyone's pretty close. <laughs> Yeah. You could say we're one big happy family, really. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Everyone looks after each other and looks out for each other. Mum and Dad did a good job. She started it 2001, I think. Yep. Um, back when I was still in high school, and I mean she'd been framing before that for years. So I started framing in Taumanui. I rang. Um, a company that was in, I guess it was the Yellow Pages back then, and thought, oh, how do I buy machinery that helps you to make picture frames? He says, I'll come down and see you. So he came down and sold me all this machinery, massive big things, and I was thinking, whoa, this is gonna be fun. So then when we moved to the Bay, I thought, well, maybe I'll just keep doing that. Lots of um, really getting to know people. We're not just serving them, you know, they're bringing you their treasures, whether they're you know, gained a grandchild or lost somebody or... Most things are treasures. They don't usually bring in something that they don't care about. Doesn't matter how amazing it is. That's just one of those things you're just gonna keep forever and do forever, really. You know, sometimes people have a job if they're unlucky and it's just a job. It was sort of the other part of me. Yeah. 3rd of February, Friday. The day of the accident, it started off like just any other day. We were, you know, at work, having, getting everything finished, getting everything sorted out. It was Friday for the long weekend. I was getting excited because Rick was going off on his first big fishing trip and I thought it was going to be so much fun for him. It was a three-day competition and um, we were out, 80-odd K out. We were way out. <laughs> I was at home. I'd had a really long day at work and I was in bed pretty early. Um, and then, yeah, I got a call from Abby. Abby doesn't usually call me for anything, usually we'll just text each other. And I said, if she calls again, I know something's really serious. And she straight away called. And I remember I just like got up out of bed, was semi getting dressed, and she said, Mum's been in an accident, we've got to get to the hospital. Um, we were waiting for a long time while they got her stable. Um, and then they allowed my sister and I to go through and see her before they took her into theatre. Um, Dad still wasn't here yet from his fishing trip. Um, but yeah, it was, it was pretty scary. We came in that night, I picked up the, uh, my phone and turned it on to see if I had a reception there. And I did, and I had two messages. It was, the first message was from uh, Nick Dobson, uh, police head here in Hawke's Bay, so he said, Rick, I don't care what time or day you get this message. If you get this message, please give me a call. Susie's been in a crash. So by the time we got to shore and, and um, so forth, I gave him a call and... There's so many good people out there, man. So anyway, he said, I've sent a car from Wairau. Hazel will take you back to Wairau and then there's another car that's leaving now from Napier and he'll pick you up from Wairau and he'll bring you to the hospital. Ken had turned up and he, um, he didn't know what I'd been told, which was very little. And he said he was the first on the scene as a police officer on the scene. So he filled me in. There was um, a deceased person. When we got to the hospital, and I don't know who told me, I ended up finding out that mum had lost her leg and they weren't sure if 
they could save her other leg. And I remember sitting on the floor in the emergency room and someone came past like a big styrofoam box and you knew it was full of blood that mum needed. I mean, like I sort of sat there and I thought, this isn't how it's supposed to happen, you know? That doesn't, that isn't, that's not what's gonna happen to mum. You know, she's too good. And it was touch and go. We knew that, that, you know, the next 24, 36 hours was gonna be really hard, and it was. She so went into cardiac arrest. So when they brought her out, she was still asleep. Um, we got to go through and see her, and then, yeah, she was in a coma for a few days. I didn't sleep for 90 hours. Yeah. Well, you just wouldn't. You couldn't sleep. When we finally got to see her, she used just tubes and wires. Um, not a pretty sight. Not a pretty sight to see somebody that you love and yeah. in that way. And um, I took all her rings and jewellery and stuff, so me and Abby were wearing them for quite a few weeks afterwards. Sue and I have always been strong. Mm. I don't think I could um, handle her not being here. I remember waking up, or if you could call it waking up, and really tired, and, re and I said, I've been fighting. I don't know what I've been fighting, but I've been fighting. You know, can I go back to sleep? If I close my eyes, am I gonna die? And then, when my brother arrived from Australia, which took him a few days to get here just because flights weren't, you know, great connections and things, he came in and, I don't know, he cracked a joke, probably at her expense, and she smiled for the first time. And it was, yeah, just huge, you know, just like a weight had been lifted off you. Um, like I hadn't stopped believing that she was gonna be okay, but then I really just knew she was gonna be okay. He walked out of that hospital on cloud nine. Yeah. yeah. We knew mum was gonna be able to handle it. I knew she was gonna be a bit pissed, but at the end of the day. Yeah, she's got a very positive outlook on everything, which is the, the main thing. Because of all the drugs they gave you, as you wake up, there were all these hallucinations. One of the rooms was, was this bulldog wallpaper all over the room, but I was still with it enough to think, now why would Hastings Hospital have Winston Churchill with bulldogs all over the wall? I remember my husband holding my hand and I remember my son cracking a joke, which as it turns out, might have been the bit that made me sort of open my eyes. But the hardest part for me was just not knowing. So I eventually was in everyone's ears asking what happened, what happened, what happened. Um, even though it was really unlucky of what happened to mum, she was lucky in the sense that she got the best care. Everyone happened to turn up at the right time. It all went relatively it was, smooth. It was really from putting the whole event together, it was like the call went out. And if it wasn't for those Carl and um, Jackie, um, those two guys who, <laughs> it was, if it wasn't for them putting tourniquets on both legs, um, because you just lost so much blood, um, she, <laughs> They took 45 minutes to get her out of the car, and they, in the end, well, they had to take some of the car with her. It was embedded in, in, the, uh, in the leg. Two months. Yeah, so I think I was one month down in the emergency areas, whatever, there are two different wards down there, and then one month I had um, in B3, which was pretty amazing as well. It was an interesting journey. You know, I'm not actually sad about the hospital, but I'm, I know it's a long time ago now, but I can remember when I went from the emergency ward to the other one, how much I was gonna miss the people, how they all stood up and, and waved and said, please come back. And you really sort of felt like they were part of your family almost. Everything was painful, but you got used to it because that was just normal life. So I think you just sort of start to get in a role, you get comfortable and you think this is it and you don't, I never saw a date where I was going to get out. It was just tomorrow, just get to tomorrow. Keep this, if we could just get that plaster smaller or if that wound a bit healed. Every time we'd visit, 
it was that much of an improvement. So it was, it was really nice to go see her at the end of each day and, and see how far she'd come. Even if she didn't think she'd done anything, you could tell that she was sitting up a bit further or she was breathing easier or just smiling. And then we took music into her and she started like bed dancing <laughs> and just like wiggling around and it was, it was awesome. It was, it was the best, yeah. I've got a break or two across here, so now I've got bars and screws and I had a fracture in the back of my neck, so I had a neck brace. I don't know if it was all my ribs were broken, but my ribs were broken. That's pretty painful. Sort of means you just can't breathe. It's the hardest, oh, everything's been hard. It's been hard. You come home and you can't get into bed and you can't get out of bed and you can't get dressed and you can't go to the toilet and you can't go to the shower. <laughs> I sometimes would sit there and think, I've really lost probably this much of my leg, and yet I cannot do anything. Yeah, all those good things you wanted to do. I think I'm going to miss being able to... I love going to the beach, you know, and, and just walking on the beach, which you took for granted. With my grandchildren. <laughs> Sorry. Um... Just little things you take for granted. It was quite nice just to be able to fly to Australia and see them when you wanted to. I can see that the journey to get better is actually longer than I thought. I thought when I, when I came to and when I worked out what was going on, I thought, oh, that's fine, I just gotta get up and get home. And then everything takes longer. Um, and I'm usually pretty patient, but now and again, you think this is ridiculous. Mum loved her shop. Oh, she loved it, yeah. It, it was everything. We were looking at needing four people in the shop and suddenly they were down to Abby and Shane. And so it was about six months that they were there managing it on their own. Every day up until then, I've spent most of my, like, you know, every work day we've been together. Like, we usually make all the decisions together and just work well. And just having that uh, relationship, so we are so close with someone. Um. So now I knew in hospital that I wasn't going to get there for, it took, I could be years. And I just thought it's not fair. The business wouldn't manage and I really wanted it to be able to keep going and get better, like I wanted it to get bigger and better. Seeing mum walk, I know she has to work 10 times harder than, than anyone else. Um, and I know that eventually you know, that's going to be the main thing is just getting her motor skills going because as you get older, it will be more and more hard work. Mum wants to live an active lifestyle, so it'll be, it'll be interesting. I'm a bit of a, a thinker. I think of what's going to happen. I'm not just talking next year, the year before, but years down the track. I know that she's lost a leg, but it's all the other things that have happened that's going to then kick in later on as you get older. But because we've been together for this long, I can't see it being any different. We'll be there for each other. I'll be there for her. In sickness and in health. <laughs> Very creative. Positive. Kind. Giving. Loving. All of the good Gentle. things you can say about a mum, really. Beautiful, beautiful woman. <laughs>